down from the boathouse in my little cutting garden where I keep the chickens along uh, the lower portion of what we call the uh, upper lawn. And you can see this autumn, because of a lot of storm damage and such, we were able to get a lot of trees down that had been dying and been diseased, which luckily has really opened up the view along the long walk. So my goal is one day to have a nice low hedge of box, a nice lovely straight crisp box hedge that would run all along here trimmed at about waist height so you can still see the sea but it would give you that nice trim perfect boxwood edge but of course that gets filed away in my dreams of dreams because i'll probably have to live to be 150 to get to that and <laughs> sure when things like old roofs and sagging floors are always uppermost on those lists but today after two days of rather nice warm weather, it's a chilly day. Uh, by looking, you could think it's quite warm. And actually in the sun here with the sparkle on the sea, it's actually not too bad. I think we're still just below freezing. I think we're about 31 Fahrenheit. So just below zero Celsius. Um, but the last two days have been nice and warm, uh, close to the 50s, which is nice. I had intentions this week to do more short vlogs as opposed to just doing one longer vlog on Saturdays because I really start to think more and more what I love to share is just to give my few viewers a moment to imagine that they have just walked out the door here on the New England seaside and they just want to have a quick little gaze out at the view or a little kick around the shells. Oh, that's a nice conch. That could go on the conch tree. But just a little short video sharing the view. And part of my morning beach comb. Here are the uh, egg casings for the conch. Aren't they pretty? It looks like a spine of some great beast. And of course, nature taking nature. There's some lovely sea lettuce growing upon its back. Sort of a lovely little vignette. So yes, just sharing a little beach comb, a little walk, a quick view, seeing how the now quite shorn seagrass is getting ready to start waking up in a month or so. Little bits of tufts of green will start to return. The old railroad tracks, which have not had a sailboat wheeled upon it for, gosh, almost 20 years now, 15 years. And that sailboat has long been sold. But what a lovely day to be out. Sun on sea, the golden ochres of late winter. And I think this little vlog will just be maybe a sample of what I'd like to start doing, just sharing little bits, little tidbits more often. Of course, I've said that before, and then <laughs> it's odd. Trying to make YouTube videos is always an interesting challenge, and really I just sort of follow my whims, which is, of course, the exact opposite of what you're meant to do. Look at this massive amount 
of drying seagrass and kelp and seaweed. And <laughs> look, it perfectly placed atop of it. A little crab carapace. I love this. This is one of the pinkest orange tones I'm always trying to find. I've had, uh, I can't tell you the number of these crab shells I've brought into uh, local paint shops and had them scan them with their computer and get various paint shades. But look how much more it... I mean, this could be quite subtle in a room with soft dove gray furniture, but then you put it against the bold, deep, rich colors of the drying seagrass, and look how bright it pops. Oh, look at the tiny, tiny little shell of the most tiniest little horseshoe crab. How tiny that is. I mean, they get quite large. You know, two feet by two feet they can get. So this little fellow was just young. So many little treasures as you go in. Look at the tiniest little detail of this. Now look at, here's another example. Because through the various stages of these drying in the sun, this is the same as the other. Look at the purple lavenders and gray blues in that. Here, let's go take this to the other one. And you can see how easy it is to get inspired by the colors here. Huh, especially with the blue of my skirt. That gives one ideas. But look at the colors next to one another. So I think these little treasures will come home with us and sit on the window ledge for a bit. But of course the colors will fade and change as I leave them in the sun. I have found if I spray them with clear, either matte or high gloss, depending on what look I want, a spray paint finish, like a varnish that you use on paintings, they will hold their colors, at least for a few years. But sometimes I like them to change in the house, so I can of course get more inspiration for colors. Well, I had meant this to just be a simple little wander, which of course it is. Can't help but get my toes in the drink, even on a cold day such as this. See that display of colors and look at the little d delicious little mussel growing happily. The amount of mussels we have here, and of course the amount we've ed up, as well as the amount I've stepped upon going in and out for a swim. All right, this silly little vlog was just a chance for you to uh, poke your head out the window, take a quick look at the sea, have a quick little beach comb, a tiny ramble on the rocky New England shore. <laughs> and there goes one of the sea ducks. I always feel like they're laughing at me, especially when I'm out filming, talking aloud to no one, as if to say, silly, silly woman. To whom are you speaking? Surely not us, for we will have none of your nonsense. And off they fly. Back inside. Yes, I know, ducks. I speak utter nonsense. But one more look before we go inside. Let's look at our treasures 
against the deep colors of the conch egg casing and the bright green of the sea lettuce. Aren't those beautiful? Of course, on the way up back to the house, I'll stop on my little rock where I leave, well, it's actually quite a big rock, where I leave things to dry, various fishing lures and different shells. We'll place the conch egg casing there. We'll put this big conch on the conch tree, which I need another bigger driftwood to hang more on. We'll take our two beautifully colored crab crab paces inside for inspiration. the next day and it's a bit more overcast today but I thought I would end today's vlog with just sharing uh, some of the artwork I've done this week. I meant to uh, share some of my printmaking on uh, polystyrene and such but I think I might save that to make into some little shorter vlogs for during the week we shall see. But for now I'll just give you this view and and show you this month as it's uh, the month of March is Women's History Month so I thought I would do some drawings in my black and white style of ladies of literature is what I'm going to be calling it. Now I have one piece I've done a few years ago that actually sells quite well. Uh, this is my uh, Virginia Woolf and it's in my black and white style which I really love to do. And uh, so I'm going, my next lady I'm going to be doing is Emily Dickinson. So here's a very rough sketch. Now you can see this isn't quite in my a curvilinear style that the final piece will be in, but this is just a rough sketch I did of Emily Dickinson because I want to start trying to get uh, her face to be sort of recognizable from her one famous portrait. But I think this month I'm going to be doing, uh, try to do as many ladies of literature as I possibly can manage. But I'm hoping to do uh, quite a few of my favorites, such as Edith Wharton, the Brontes, Isaac Dennison, Mrs. Browning, etc. If you can think of some of your favorite uh, female literary uh, writers, why not let me know in the comments and I'll consider them for my ladies of literature. And since I'm sharing my Emily Dickinson um, sketch, in the final piece I will be having two uh, other images involved uh, in it that sort of references a couple of her well-known poems, uh, one of which I think will be her uh, poem Hope, which I love how that goes, so maybe I'll just read that out now. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. And with those lovely words of Emily Dickinson and my funny little sketch, I think I will end today's little vlog. And I hope all of you find a moment in your day to enjoy some peace and tranquility. And as always, remember to stay creative. And until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.